let's talk about doing work that is meaningful. You've heard of do what you love. That's something we would all want to do, to be able to earn a livelihood just doing the things that we enjoy. Who wouldn't want that? But what you don't hear as often, and I, I'm here to remind you, and made this video inspire you towards truly meaningful work, is to also love what you do. So not only do what you love, sure, let's aspire to that. It takes work. It takes time to do what you love and get paid for it. And until then, we must love what we do to bring love and even joy into the actions that are necessary to get us to the point where we can do what we love and get paid for it. Because, well, I'm speaking to solopreneurs here. Most of you who are watching this are yearning to build your own business, grow it. You know that as a solopreneur, there is a huge variety of tasks and projects that you have to do to be able to build a business. Sure, you have to you know, maintain, build a website, maintain a website. You got to learn social media and all the various skills that are involved in social media. You've got to learn how to describe your work and then to um, you know, maybe create imagery that's surrounding your work. You have to learn to um, uh, sell to prospective clients, to sell authentically to prospective clients. You've got to learn the technology for getting clients to you know, be able to sign up and then follow up. And then you've got to do bookkeeping. You've got to do um, a bunch of other logistical things that, you know, that I can't even think of right now because it's so normal to the day-to-day. So much, so much things to do. Is that what you imagined it would be like when you thought, mm, I'm going to have a business doing what I love? Probably not. Maybe you had, the, you had in mind, oh, a business doing what I love is basically spending time with clients doing the deep work, the, the most fulfilling, deep transformational work that I love doing and seeing them uh, benefit from. That's maybe what you imagine but you didn't imagine all the 95% of the other activities that you had to do to get to the moment of the client work, right? And to follow, you know, things you have to do to follow up after the client work, et cetera. But the that's the reality of solopreneurship. Unless you had a large amount of, you know, money to invest in having a team that does everything else and you just show up and do your work. Now, the, the thing a lot of people don't realize is even if you had all that money to hire a team, hire a team and all that, the, the team loves to take your money. And there's no guarantee at all. In fact, uh, I've seen it more often than not. People who take their money and hire a team and market, oh, I'll just get the marketers to do, to do the stuff and the technologists to do the stuff. And I just show up and, and serve my clients and they bring me clients. They take care of the logistics. I just show up and, most most of the time, it doesn't work out that way. The marketers love to take your money. The technologists love to take your money. The virtual assistants love to bill more hours because that's what they're incentivized to do is to bill more hours for you. And yet you still don't have clients or you don't have the right kinds of clients or not enough of them to justify the team. That's what I see most of the time, people out there doing this. This is why I have such a passion to, to make sure that you first are able to thrive as a solopreneur, or what I like to say, soulpreneur, S-O-U-L, preneur, to thrive as a soulpreneur first, to understand the various moving pieces and to do them efficiently and to do them with love. And then, yes, once you know what really works for you, then you can outsource First, you probably automate using software and AI. You automate things. Once you know what works, you automate things. And then what you cannot automate, you delegate. And what you cannot delegate, you appreciate that you have to do it yourself. But first, as a solopreneur, it is a wise idea to first learn at least the major parts, the overview of these different pieces so that you know what needs to be done. You know what, how to do it effectively. 
so that you know how to then automate, outsource, et cetera. But let's come back to the, the core message of this video, which is there are lots of things to do in order to get to the dream of the true livelihood of doing just what you love and getting paid for it. And then on the way there, we must, because what's the alternative? If we don't love what we are doing on the way there, what's the alternative? It's to have natural avoidance, resistance, procrastination, frustration, and this feeling like, ah, uh, I'm not living the life that I should be living, that I want to be living. Well, hold on. You know, see, here's the problem. The more clear your vision is for the life you want to be living, the more you feel the gap between where you are now and where you want to be. The more clear you are about the vision for your ideal life, the more danger there is to being attached emotionally, mentally, spiritually to that ideal life being, well, the ideal. It's what's supposed to be your soul's expression of a life. And the more you're attached to it, the more you resent the present. The more you resent the present. What is the present? It's the gift that life has given you for today. And the tasks that you so-called have to do to get to the vision of your ideal life. Well, are you going to resent the present? Are you going to say, this is not my ideal life. I have to do this. These are chores. This is a, a burden that I'd like to be unburdened from. This is the burden I have to I have to bear before I get there. And so I have, just have to buckle up and grind my teeth and until I get there. It's one option. It's what some people do. It's what a lot of people do. And it can work if you, you know, hustle and grind for enough years in that kind of state. You may, you know, no matter how how much you disliked it, you may eventually build a something that you you can love. But I say, why not bring joy and love all along the way there? Why not breathe spirit and gratitude for this present? Oh, I have to do my website. Oh, I have to, you know, do social media. I have to create content. I have to do some market discovery. I have to create aligned offers. I have to do gentle launches. Have to? Or I get to do these things, practicing, bringing love and joy and gratitude and um, true enjoyment of whatever it is that's in front of me. Of course it's possible to love what you do if you set an intention and to give energy to this very process. So that's my encouragement for you in this video. Now, what what is the what are the general steps towards being able to do what you love and getting paid for it? I'm going to give you three simple steps. These are the general major stages of the journey. First step, to stay in business, <laughs> to stay in business long enough so that you can get paid doing what you love, to stay in business in the beginning, you must sell what other people want to buy from you. I mean, it sounds simple, does it? But I've seen most, most of you, most people watching this are people who, you know, uh, comment on my stuff and, and talk to me and, and work with me and ask me questions. They're trying to make other people want to buy what they themselves want to sell. Meaning, oh, I've spent you know years studying this modality, this wonderful modality or diving into my own life experience. And I have wonderful, rich life experience to share with everybody. Why don't they just pay me? to tell them about my life experience or to coach them with this wonderful modality or to heal them with this wonderful process I've created. They don't want it. They don't want, because you don't know what they want. You're just, you know what you want. What you want is to do this beautiful, deep work, which I agree might be really beautiful and deep. But you think what you need to do is persuade them to charm them into wanting your beautiful, deep work. 
it's not a noble path. First of all, it doesn't work most of the time because you start having to use persuasion and hype and all the things that doesn't feel right to you. That that isn't doing your beautiful deep work the justice that it deserves, right? Your beautiful deep work deserves to be done without hype and undue persuasion and pushing anybody into anything. Your beautiful deep work can be shaped and packaged to what they're already telling you they want. This is why I'm such a believer in what I do myself, the authentic market discovery process. If, you, if you're really wanting to dive in, I have a whole course on it. But basically, it's about talking to the people that you can already talk to. Not to, oh, I got to build a new audience, George. I got to find new people. Well, new people, why would they want to talk to you? Why would they want to talk to you? Sure, maybe you post content for a few months and then now they want to talk to you. But you already have people in your sphere of influence, friends, colleagues, classmates. Maybe some of you have past clients. Maybe some family members are relevant to talk to. But you already have a bunch of people that you can talk to who, if you were to bring your empathy and curiosity to the conversation and find out what they really want at this time, you will probably find that some of what they want is something that you can fulfill through your beautiful deep work. But it just has to be said in a different way. It has to be packaged in a different way. It's still... It's still your beautiful deep modality, but it's just pointed towards a particular problem that they have or a particular yearning that they have. So that is step one, is to do the authentic market discovery so that you can sell them what they already want rather than convince them they should want something else. Sell them what they already want because that makes marketing easier and makes it authentic. You don't have to push anybody. You don't have to cajole, persuade, charm anyone. You don't have to be other than what you truly authentically are. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to puff yourself up to be something more than or, or different than who you are. If you sell what they want, they want it. And you've shaped what you have pointed into, applied to what they want, then they want it. Again, to go much deeper into all this with a step-by-step -step process, you can take my course, Authentic Market Discovery, if, you're, if you want to. But essentially, that is the process, to talk with them, to discover what they want, and then to sell that to them, to sell that to them. You're still going to be doing your beautiful modality, pointed in the direction of their problems and their yearnings. So that's step one to sell what they want. And by the way, part of step one, as I've already said, is to practice loving those actions, right? Because most people go, oh, George, I don't want to twist myself. I don't want to twist my beautiful, deep modality or twist my authenticity to solving some shallow problem that they, that they want to solve, sure. But to me, it's very shallow. We're not getting to the deep roots. Wait, 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 hold on. Do you even hear yourself? That sounds to me like ego. That sounds to me like a lack of empathy, right? For the people that, that you can talk to. The truth is, if you talk to somebody deeply enough, I'll talk about your beautiful deep work. If you have deep enough conversations with someone, you will naturally find yourself having an abundance of empathy towards them. It's natural. You naturally care when you go deep with someone. And that's before you be, they become a client. You talk with them from a place of genuine caring and curiosity, from an intention for caring. You don't, maybe you don't care yet, but from an intention to care and to be curious. And as you keep going, going more and more, your hearts start to align, your energies start to match one another. And naturally, you're going to care about what they, what, what, what hurts them or what they yearn for, what they or have a passion for, naturally you're going to begin to care. And that caring will, not, will help you to shape 
okay, yes, I this I still care. Of course, I still care very deeply, and I still believe in my modality. But now I'm going to shape it towards being able to solve your problem or to match your yearning. So practice loving that action. Practice loving them, the, the people. Because when you do that, then the whole journey can be one of joy, deep joy, of true human connection, of bringing love to the situation, of bringing joy to these actions of so-called market discovery and selling, but selling is really just offering them what they want. Bringing love into making money because where does money come from? Does it come from your passion? Does money, your income, does your income come from your passion and your beautiful deep modality? No, no. Money, your money, your income comes from other people's spending. This is so important. And like, I have to remind you again and again and again, money doesn't come from your affirmations or your, just the, the fact that you quote unquote deserve it. Plenty of money goes to people who seem not to deserve it. Okay. Money is neutral and doesn't care if you deserve it. If you are spiritual, if you are a good person or a bad person, money comes from some other human beings saying, Oh, I want that. Oh, how did you know that's what I wanted? I hear, I'm happy to pay you money for it. So sell what they want, bring love into the process of understanding what they want and selling what they want. Step one, okay? That's a major step. And then the second major step is while you are doing authentic market discovery and selling what they want, creating aligned offers, authentic market discovery, the, 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 the jargon, now, now you can hopefully understand it, doing authentic market discovery, which is discovering what they want, and then creating aligned offers, which is selling what they want. Authentic market discovery, creating, a, while you're doing that, at the same time, you're, you're carving out some of your time to do what? To grow a true audience. How do you grow a true audience? By having the patience and the consistency of showing up with authentic content. Again, let me say this again. Step two, which is in parallel to step one. Maybe you could say step 1A and step 1B. Okay, but step two, which is in parallel to step one, is to show up consistently and authentically with your content, whether it's making videos, you're writing blog posts, but you're showing up telling the meaningful stories from your life and your work, telling the meaningful stories and the message that goes along with those stories from your life and your work, your relationships, your health, whatever it is that's related to the work that you do, telling those meaningful stories. You have so many meaningful stories. And if you don't think you do, you've got to mine your past, mine the treasure, the gold of your past and your present too to find those meaningful experiences that when you tell those stories, people go, oh my gosh, I relate to that story. Your ideal clients will go, oh, I, re I relate to that story. Oh, I want to be like that too. Or I want to overcome that problem too. Or yes, I can totally relate to what, what you've experienced. So that's step two, parallel with step one, right? Is to show up consistently telling meaningful stories that are grounded, that are true, authentic, Tell it in an authentic way, in a way that is not trying to pretend to be like someone else, but what is your most authentic energy signature? Okay, so that's step two. And by doing that consistently, you will, of course, grow a true audience. People will share your stories with their friends. It starts with the people that you already know. Of course, you post things and you're existing, you know, five Facebook friends. If it's a meaningful story, they will share it. They will comment on it. Other people will see it. Okay. And you gradually grow your true audience. That's in parallel with the other step of authentic mark discovery and creating aligned offers. You grow your true audience until, until one day you can get to the, the next and sort of the yearned for step, which is now you get to sell whatever you want to sell because you have a big enough true audience that resonate with just who you are, that resonate with who you are and who's gotten value from you over the years of you telling these meaningful stories and messages. Now you have a big enough audience. You can sell what you want to sell 
Because by the way, along the way, you've been educating them about your beautiful deep work by telling stories that are relevant to that beautiful deep work. You've been telling stories, you've been educating them. And so therefore, naturally, they're open to you selling what you want to sell them. Now, let's say, well, I think maybe that can, I can just end it here. <laughs> this is plenty here. But these are the two main wings of authentic business, right? Is to do authentic market discovery and creating aligned offers, which is to have empathy for understanding what they want and then selling what they want. You can shape your modality towards what they want. And the other arm is to grow, growing a true audience by telling meaningful stories that are related to your work, and doing it consistently. And if you show up with that heart of service, your audience will, will know that. They'll feel it. And they'll trust you. And you'll, you'll have earned, you'll have deserved and earned that trust, which at some point you can then start to sell what you want. And they'll go, oh yeah, I, I get it now. I get it now. Even telling these stories and sharing this message for long enough, now I get it. Now I want it. It takes time to, sh to help them shift what they want from something shallower, what you think is shallower, to something what you believe is deeper. It takes time to showing them consistently to shift their mindset and their heart set towards the direction that where you can finally sell what you want and they'll eagerly buy it. That's what I dream for you. That's what I wish for you. You may need to watch this again to, again, to understand and really um, lean into these worthwhile, noble pursuits of loving what you are, you must do now in order to get to the stage where you can do what you love and get paid wonderfully for it. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> I hope this is inspirational. I look forward to seeing your comments below on whether it uh, did anything for you. And thank you so much for joining me on this journey.